Welcome to Teamwork, A Better Way, the podcast filled with stories, experiences, and insights from leading high-performing team experts. Here are your hosts, Spencer Horn and Christian Napier. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Teamwork, A Better Way. I am Christian Napier, that immaculately dressed gentleman uh, to the, I don't know, or the right or the left of me on the screen, I can't ever tell, is Spencer Horn. Spencer, how are you? Fabulous, Christian. So good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you for hosting and so great to be with you. Well, it's great to be with you. In a rainy February, it's been a kind of a weird end of January. February. We've had a lot of rain and it's been quite warm. It, it is. It was actually, listen, I have been working since about 6.30 this morning doing construction in my house. And so I've been in and outside of my house, taking things in and out of my basement, getting ready for the tilers that are there. My internet has gone out twice this morning because of construction. Uh, so I've been out in the rain and slash snow this morning. And it, yeah, I, I'm luckily I'm not dripping sweat right now. <laughs> well, fingers crossed that the internet stays connected because we have an amazing guest, Spencer. Yes, we do. Today. So why don't you go ahead and introduce her? Absolutely. We have the incredible Miss Tavia Sharp, and she is a brand image strategist, speaker, and coach with over 20 years of fashion industry experience designing for some of the top brands like Cal Calvin Klein, Nautica, and Macy's. And her designs have been featured on celebrities like Drake, Neo, Chrissy Teigen, and Emma Roberts, and in magazines like GQ and Sports Illustrated. After years of working behind the scenes, Tavia has discovered her true calling, and that's really to help ambitious and impact-driven entrepreneurs and executives to discover their secret weapon and upgrade their online and offline image so that they can take their business and brand to the next level. From individualized consulting and styling services to corporate trainings and workshops, Tavia brings her A-game to help clients solidify their personal and professional image to stand out and make an impact and magnetize, I like that word, magnetize premium opportunities. And so I'm excited to bring on Ms. Tavia Sharp. Tavia, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me today. Wonderful to, to have you. Thank you. So you and I met, you are a brand strategist, personal branding strategist, and, and we met some time ago via social media. And mm -hmm. you are really good at what you do uh, in, in social media. And I think we've been connected for over a year and you, you reach out and, and really something that you did resonated with me and we connected actually a couple months ago, but it took that, it took that time. And I am so glad that we were able to connect and I was able to meet you because I think you're amazing, wonderful, and, and you've helped so, so many people. And we're excited, Christian and I, to you, for you to be able to help our audience, who some of them are listening all over the world. We have people that registered from Asia, uh, India, from the Middle East, Europe, and South America, everywhere. So hopefully they'll be joining us. And if you are, please Give us a shout out on social media. Say hi, and we'll try to we'll try to put your your comments up on on the screen. But Tavia, so you talked about finding your true calling. Talk about that. How did first of all, how did you get into this industry, a fashion industry, and then make that transition to brand strategist? Fashion industry. I actually studied fashion and went to school to be a fashion designer, and always knew I was going to move to New York City and work, you know, in the fashion industry. And so that's what I did. I'm, I'm actually dialing from, from New York City right now. So, and then after working 15 years for some pretty big brands, as you mentioned, I decided, you know, I really want to help individuals. I had more of a, a calling to help people because working in fashion really wasn't like, we're not saving lives, you know, we're not doing anything. Um, on a on an impact scale and i really wanted to make a bigger impact and so i knew i could take my skills and help individuals to really shine so that's really my pivot and where i started i actually this is actually my second business my first business i had a clothing line and so i did it through my clothing line for about five years but then i realized for me it was really about the service piece and helping people feel more confident and stand out and get noticed so they could actually be heard, you know, because when we're visually seen, 
it just backs up the message that we want to share and and why we're here, right? So that's really where, what happened. And so that is saving lives, right? Because there are a lot of people that don't feel heard yes. and maybe feel invisible for, for one reason or, or another. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to start off and, uh, you know, I'm sorry, Christian, I've been hogging. No, I'm going to let you go, Christian. Go. Oh, all right. Well, in that line, you know, we talked before we came on air here uh, that, you know, we're a podcast that's focused on teamwork and Mm -hmm. functioning as teams and creating high-performing teams. And we often think of our personal brand as that, personal, and it's about individual expression. And so my first question is, you know, how do you you find this balance between uh, your own comfortable personal expression while also um, creating this cohesive team Mm -hmm. image? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh oh, hope we have there. Oh, can you see me? Can you hear me? We can hear you now, Tavia. Go ahead. Sorry about that. So, when we talk about image, image really is more than the way we dress or look. Image really is A, B, C, Ds. And I'm going to say what those are appearance, right? That is the style piece and how we present ourselves. B is behavior and how we communicate through you know our nonverbal cues um c is communication style right and how we speak and showcase who we are communicate that and d is digital presence and that's how we show up uh using the internet and social media so really when we think about um image it's holistic it's not just one thing so i want to say that first and I've worked with a lot of individuals who, you know, they they want to be themselves, right? But they also want to show who they are as a leader, as a team player, and to show that they are really there to, you know, make an effort, right? So when we show up in a way that says, hey, I'm part of the company culture, here's how I showcase that, right? Through these four things I just explained, it really shows the that hey, if I'm showing up this way, you know, it's, it creates that ripple effect um, for others to show up that way and be a part of a team, right? So it's not so much about, oh, we have to dress like, you know, dress up and wear this very formal attire. I don't even think that that's necessary nowadays, right? Because it's not the new norm, but it really is about showcasing hey, this is what I am putting, you know, forth and how I want to be. Pre- Perceive. So, Tavia, we lost you there at the very end. Uh, the connection oh. kind of froze. I don't know if that's having something to do with Spencer's construction uh, that's going on <laughs> in his home, or, or 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 what's going on. But uh, I think it's New York. Actually, I think they have too much too much demand on their internet services. We're good here. <laughs> It probably is. I'm sorry about that. So I love, love that. And um, so it is holistic. You know, it's, I, I love that ABCD, appearance, behavior, communication, mm-hmm. digital presence. But, you know, while appearance can impact first impressions, because this, this may seem to be superficial to, to some people who, who, who checked into this, but you're showing that there's a lot more depth to to uh, brand and, and appearance than just what what first meets the eye. But while appearance can impact first impressions, can you elaborate on how it influences longer term dynamics and and even trust? Because that really builds into team dynamics, right? How are we building trust? I'm I'm certain that ties into your communication and behavior, right? Yeah, definitely. And and think about it. You know, it's really about being a part of the brand culture. Right. It's not it's not so much like I'm telling I'm saying that you have to dress up to. To, you know, show, hey, I'm I'm super formal, I, I'm, you know, looking professional. It's more about dressing in a way that shows, hey, I'm part of the team culture. Right. I'll give you an ex- example. 
Um, I'll give you two examples. One is my own personal example. I worked in the fashion industry and I had to work for a pretty well-known brands. So for example, when I worked for Calvin Klein, the culture is that we have to look a way to really fit into that lifestyle. And one way to do that is the way you dress because we want to show that, hey, we're a part of this culture. We have to showcase the branding, right? And some of it is showcasing our own uh, individuality, but also showing, hey, I, I care about the brand. And one way to do that is visually, whether that's in person going to work or showing up on Zoom, or is that on your um, social media channels, especially LinkedIn, because that is our professional footprint, right? Our digital footprint. So how are you showing up on LinkedIn to showcase, hey, I'm a part of this brand and um, I actually you know, want to highlight that uh, visually, not just, you know, by the words I say or, or um, by just kind of like putting myself up there, right? It's actually branding yourself and, and showcasing your thought leadership as well, like sharing um, stories and uh, different things about the brand, right? When you work for a company, you can share, showcase and highlight some of those things on your feed, right? And, and successes and stories from working in the company and the culture, right? These are all a part of your image. It's not just, you know, how we dress. That's just one component. So that's one thing. And then, you know, I've had other clients who work in all different types of industries, but they want to show that, hey, you know, I'm a leader, right? I'm not just here to, you know, just roll out of bed and, and uh, come to work. But I actually want to show that I, you know, I care about how I present myself, how I'm being perceived. And so I have had a few clients who work definitely in different industries, but, you know, one client even works, you know, in for Amazon. And we all know if you're working about a, combined a, a, behind a computer all day, maybe you're not client facing. Um, sometimes we, we see that industry as like very casual, right? But how do I showcase I'm a leader in that environment? Well, it's actually, you know, showcasing the effort that you want to put in, but still re being relatable to the team. So you're not like, hey, I'm here, I'm your manager, and I'm going to wear a suit because that's just not appropriate. But how can I showcase, hey, I care about how I'm putting my best foot forward, but also that I relate to you. I'm not trying to outshine you, outdo you. But so we have to realize that our visual communication is just as powerful as what we say and how we communicate um, in everyday life, right? I, I love that, Tavia. I, I, I just I have so many thoughts. You talked about LinkedIn. You talked about really having a, an impact and, and people taking you seriously. I think there's a uh, it seems to me that there's kind of a movement today that says, well, I, you know, people should just respect me no matter what I wear, or how I show up. And I, I get to be me in all circumstances and all circ in all situations. And and I think there's a, there's a lot of problems with that, because how we dress, as we all know, impacts actually how we behave. And I think it was Muhammad Ali that said, I, I, I said I was the greatest ever before I was or something like that. I'm, I'm not saying it right. Or I, I knew I was the greatest before I actually was. And it's this concept of acting as if, if you're not a leader, what do you do to become that? Act as if, you know, you don't go around telling everybody what to do, but be that person who wants to influence and people look up to whether you're behind a computer or driving a forklift in Amazon warehouse or whatever it is, yeah. is carry yourself and, and speak in a way not verbally and non-verbally is what I hear you say. Is that right? Yes, correct. And there is something called enclosed cognition. And you can actually look that up. There's enclosed been cognition. Enclo mm -hmm, correct. And it is actually basically essentially saying um, how you dress impacts how you feel and, and, and how you function, right? So, you know, when you are intentional about putting something on, 
that says, I want to set my tone for the day. What does that look like for me? When you actually open up your closet and you set an intention, just like you make your bed in the morning, just like you have your morning coffee, right? What's the intention? And so when you're intentional about how you dress, guess what happens? There is a result because of the intention. So when I say, hey, where am I going today? What am I doing today? How am I going to dress for the day? Put my head in the game, just like a, you know, a football player, right? How does he prepare for the game, right? And they, they, they do a lot of mental work, right? And physical, and also they dress for the game, right? I know it's a uniform, it's different, but we, we have to think about that. It does impact how you think and feel. And, um, and also there's been many studies, it shows that you're more productive as well when you have enclosed cognition and you think about what I wear, impacts how I feel. Also, there's been many studies that showcase when. She's speaking your language, Christian, with the with the team uniforms, right? When it- yes, we're freezing up again here, Tavia. Can Hopefully we'll get this uh, sorted out. Okay. Yeah, here I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, those fantastic okay. points. I want to come back to something you said about the uniforms because you. Mm-hmm. You talked about your prior experience working for big brands like Calvin Klein, for example, and then how you dressed uh, is a reflection of that brand. Mm-hmm. On our podcast, we've had a lot of conversations about diversity, about inclusiveness, about being authentic. And, uh, you know, people come from various cultures and backgrounds and things like that. And so from a team perspective, how can we provide space to allow this kind of personal expression, you know, allow people to be their authentic selves while at the same time uh, maintaining some sense of, for lack of a better term, of brand, you know, the brand of our team. Mm-hmm. Personal brand, has, yeah. Personal brand, yeah. There has to be a balance. And, and nowadays, I think companies are really embracing, you know, that they want that, you know, um, diversity and inclusion and self-expression is really important. So we have to be able to express ourselves because that's what really what clothing is. It is an extension of your self-expression. And yes, we all have to wear clothes, right? That's just what we do. Nobody's walking out the house naked. We have to wear clothes. But how can you wear something that feels that's you, that really expresses who you are before you even speak. And when you put in that extra effort to showcase that, people respond to it positively. And there's and there and I've proven it and my clients have proven it too, like even certain colors that you wear, you know, because maybe it enhances your mood and your mindset, it could also impact somebody else, right? Because the color behind something is impactful. There's an energy to it. So, and I think just now, um, you know, with diversity inclusion, um, companies aren't embracing that they want their employees to be, uh, like there isn't this strict dress codes anymore, right? We've kind of been very um, lenient with that. And they, they really embracing that ever since the pandemic, people want to dress a little more casually and uh, feel comfortable and also express who they are, whether that's, wearing your hair naturally, right? Or, or um, just, you know, not having these strict um, rules and regulations because they've realized that people are more productive that way when they feel more like they can express their own self-expression. So, you know, it's interesting. You you talk about, again, being intentional about how you communicate visually. One of the things that uh, we used to do is teach people with just their voice, how they show up and, and not having a wimpy voice speaking with intention. You're talking about just showing up with presence. So imagine with you, you match that you know, a powerful voice with a powerful image. And, and now you're, you're compounding, it sounds like, your, your impact in a way. Exactly. I think people don't realize that the power behind the visual tool 
uh, because we're so used to, you know, the communication, talking, you know, but visual communication is just as important. And, you know, in fact, many of my clients have said who are working in a corporate setting have said, you know, just changing up their their image and the way they dress, honestly, just the way they dress alone has had significant impact on just feeling like more confident at work, more relatable to people. Because people, wow, I really like the way you're dressed today, right? And then there you go. There's a whole conversation on that. And just it it shows your effort and that you want to put your best foot forward. And I think that really communicates very powerfully uh, beyond words. So to me, this is, this is important. But there may be some people listening, Tavia, that will push back against that and, and think that this, this whole professional image and and discussion that we're having right now is is just all superficial and and yet you're tying in words like uh, uh clothe what did you and clothe cognition so it's not superficial i mean there's science behind what we're talking about it's not just it, it, you know is this um corporate trick to get us to behave and dress and and, and you know act a certain way and control us in no. in what I'm hearing, it's it's we're actually controlling ourselves and put and therefore putting our best foot forward to get the best results. What I hear, exactly. It's more about impacting yourself, because when you care about yourself, you will care about how you're being perceived. You will care about how what effort you put into the world, and that includes how you dress. That includes, like I said, why you make your bed. Why do you uh, keep your home in orderly condition, right? Why? Because it's impacting your mood and your mindset. And well, so, so does your clothing. So so let's just let's just keep on with this theme of superficiality for just a minute because let's say mm-hmm. I am listen, I just got a pedicure for the first time in a long time. My wife and I are gonna do that uh every six weeks or something. And you know, Christian, our wives like it when we have pedicured feet, right? I mean, we take care of ourselves. It makes them happy too. But so let's say we're cleaning our room, we're making our bed, we're dressing, we're speaking well, and somebody else isn't. How do we make sure, because we're talking about team performance, how do we get to a place where we are positively influencing and avoid judgment? Because that's that's a part of, of diversity, right? Not everybody gets to this place at the same time. Sometimes people have, you know, we want to create a culture where people want to be a part of that. We're actually attracting people who want to put their best foot forward. But there may be some people out there who say, "Listen, you know, I'm no no offense to anyone from Seattle, but you know, I'm 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 part of the grunge culture. This is who I am, and and that's my image, right? That's my brand, and I don't want to play with the rest of you. And and how do we avoid, you know, judgment, and and which can be destructive to the team? Yeah, that is true. But I do think um, it's it's human nature to judge a book by its cover. It's just human nature. And so, you know, it's really comes down to how do you want to be perceived in the world? And, and look, I'm not saying that you have, okay, what I want to say is that it's not about spending a ton of money, okay, and buying branded clothing, okay, it's not about dressing up, to be super formal and somebody that you're not, okay? It's really about dressing better. So better for someone could be if they just wear, I don't know, a t-shirt and jeans every day. Could you wear, what would be the better version of that? Could it be something that is a little like more fit? You know, is it more, um, is it a better color? Is it a better fit? is does it look more neat and put together that t-shirt and jeans i mean um or you know what would that be for you is it you know really um you know you're grooming could you groom yourself better i do think it it does come down to how you care for yourself like self-care right because if we're talking about somebody who's just like rolling out of bed and literally just shows up that way then there's something else probably going on right because then you, it's like, to me, that's, that's saying, I really just don't care about being here. So then that there's something else that needs to be addressed. And so, and, but if it's somebody who just says, Hey, you know, I like wearing t- t-shirt and t-shirt, um, and I want the acceptable. Okay. That's fine. But 
do you want to get promoted? Do you want to be a leader? And how can you do that without changing who you are as, as an individual? And it does make a difference to those around you. It's, it's impacting them. They're just not saying it. People aren't going to say the not nice things, but they're thinking those things. So how can we get ahead of that? Is saying, how do I want to see myself in one year, three years, five years? How does that person and that version of me show up and dress every day? What do they look like? When I ask this question to people, they never say that they're wearing exactly what they're wearing right now. <laughs> they never say that. They always have a vision of what that future version of themselves looks like, is doing, is how they're wearing, what they're wearing, how they're showing up, who they're talking to. It's very clear. So we're always having to evolve and, and express ourselves and expand. Well, I had to chuckle a little bit, uh, Tavia, when you talked about just rolling out of bed and showing up at work, because now since the pandemic, People who work remotely can literally do that, right? Like we just roll out of bed and we show up. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I so I want to ask you about that a little bit more because, you know, five, 10 years ago, we didn't really think about how we appeared online. We just, you know, we, we showed up in the office and that was that. But now we have fully remote workforce. We have hybrid uh, workforce. And so mm -hmm. how do you take uh, the lessons uh, that you've learned, the advice that you share and uh, also incorporate these new styles of working that we didn't have 10, 15 years ago, like we're just doing right now. We're here having a, a call online remote. And, uh, and like I said, yeah, we can just roll out of bed and we can turn on our, our monitor and camera and we're in a meeting. And I can uh, just... <laughs> That's there, I'm good to go. Tavia, I mean, you, you have a couple of different hairstyles you can sport. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, the thing is, is that when we dress, we, we don't have to, you know, really do it right. But what we should think about, again, the intention, want to set the tone for our day, who are we meeting with, it's and how are we wanting to feel, right? In, and the way you dress impacts how you feel. So it's more about, um, yeah, not having to look out of the house fully head to toe uh, dolled up, but, you know, really thinking about who am I seeing that day? How do I want, uh, what about the people that I'm going to be meeting with? How do I want to express and communicate myself, right? And it always comes down to how you want to be perceived because people have comments. And again, it's just human nature. So how do you want to be perceived on that those virtual calls? So I have uh, a, a friend of mine, Roseanne uh, Bateman, who is calling in from or ch ch chatting in on LinkedIn from Columbus, Indiana. She used to be here in Salt Lake with us. Now she's in Indiana. And she says, uh, Tavia, should people dress for the job they want? Kind of what we've been talking about, isn't it? Yes. I, I love that question. I think yes. 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 Because to me, it really goes back to, um, it, it's okay. Um, it's a little bit of, I'm going to talk a little bit about a law of attraction here because that's something I believe in. Because I believe when we shift our energy into what we want to attract, it will come more easily. We can envision it. We can uh, journal on it. We can embody it, right? There's different ways that we can call it in, right? And so when you dress for the job that you want, you start to embody that person who already has it, you know, who has that job, who has that promotion. Um, so it, to me, absolutely. And um, you'll just feel more confident to step into that role before you even have it. You know, I, th I think that also uh, applies to working remotely. You know, we've talked about hybrid work. And so I I everything that we're talking about, I mean, when I come to work, I, I work um, remotely every day. 
And yet I put on, you know, one of my best shirts every, every day. Now I don't always put on a sport coat. I put that on for you, Tavian. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I don't always put on a sport coat, but I, but I dress in a way that makes me feel confident. And it just, it gets me in the mindset to, to work now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important because it, I, I create my own little, you know, environment here at home that then impacts, you know, my brain, how I'm, how I'm thinking, how I'm focused and, and how I'm working is what I hear you saying. So not only am I dressing for a potential job that I want to have, I'm dressing for the success I want to have a year, three years, five years down the road, as you, as you talked about, even if I'm just rolling out of bed, taking a shower, putting on, uh, you know, I, I still wear jeans below, but I, I just, I want to put on, you know, my best, my best jeans. Yeah. And I, I do think it comes down to how you want to be remembered too. What, how do you want people to see you and remember you? Do you want to be seen as the person who's always putting their best foot forward? Yes. Or do you want to be seen as a person who's like, Ooh, that person always just kind of looks like they don't want to be here. I mean, <laughs> again, people are thinking it, I know it's not fair. I understand that, right? But we could look this up. So, you know? and, and this is a problem with society, Tavia. I mean, it, mm -hmm. newsflash, life isn't fair. So mm -hmm. there are people that, that say, well, we need to break down the system and replace it with what? Yeah. What, is, is, is there another system that's going to be better? I mean, you have an opportunity to put your best foot forward or, you know, to be forced to be something else that according to whom? And, and what right. we're talking about, this is according to you, right? Yes. Yes. But, but, but is it when we're talking about you worked for Calvin Klein and so you work for that mm -hmm. co corporate culture, how do you mm -hmm. reconcile doing what's for me and that corporate culture? I mean, I, th I think we kind of talked about that, but. In, in mm -hmm. the light of this new maybe resistance against the system. <laughs> resistance. I mean, I just don't think you can change human nature, right? We, um, it's based on those uh, quick judgments, you know, um, Malcolm Gladwell wrote that book. What was it called? Blink. And, you know, they're just, they happen in a snap. And it's, it's, it actually goes back to survival mechanisms as humans, like, we make those quick judgments because we want to make sure we feel safe. We want to make sure like we feel a certain way around this individual. And so it actually isn't on purpose that we make the judgments. It's because we're trying to protect ourselves. And so those judgments are just based on just that innate human nature. Um, and But it really makes a difference in the long run. That's what we have to realize. So one thing I want to say is that, yes, we get to be in the driver's seat. We get to can take control of our image. That's the power we have. So wouldn't you rather say, I intentionally want to be perceived a certain way than letting someone just assume something about you? I think I would rather be in control of how I want to be perceived. So that's, that's again, that's what we have to choose. I'm finding this conversation completely fascinating, by the way. I, I really, really like it. And and this idea of being proactive and choosing, uh, making a conscious decision about how people uh, perceive you, I think is, is quite interesting. And I want to come back to the A, B, C, D, because, mm -hmm. because what you're telling me is that it's not just about what we're wearing, although what we're wearing can impact how we feel behave and feel about ourselves and could even potentially impact how we communicate with others. Uh, but you also mentioned that, that, uh, you know, you know, perceptions are human nature and we make them in a snap. And, you know, we've talked about on the one hand, uh, the rolling out of bed and looking like a schlub, you know, type of thing, but there's the other way, which is, uh, the perception that we are calling too much attention to ourselves you know, by uh, the way that we dress. And maybe that has a potentially adverse uh, impact on the team as well. Mm -hmm. But when you, I was thinking about this, I was thinking, well, actually you can kind of handle that by 
the combination of not just what you're wearing, but how you're communicating and how you're behaving. And people then have this more holistic view of you. And they can be a lot more accepting of your individual quirks and dress because you like to wear certain colors all the time or you are you talking about more Christian? More flamboyant than yeah yeah spencer's got you know some crazy suits uh, which i think you know for professional speakers sometimes that's helpful right because it helps you stand yeah. out it differentiates mm -hmm. you from the crowd so on and so forth but mm -hmm. you know in those kinds of environment yes you want to you are intentionally trying to call attention to yourself but for many you know it could be frowned upon it's like hey you know this person is is uh you know, calling undue attention to themselves. It's not necessarily warranted. Yes, definitely. I mean, you know, I even have a, a, a few clients who have, who are in executive positions and leadership roles, um, talking like top VPs and they have tattoos and they have to cover up their tattoos because it's, yeah, look, that's who, they got tattoos because that's their individual choice, right? But in a work environment, they feel more comfortable saying, hey, I don't want to show that side of me here because I'm in my, you know, leadership position here and I want to be taken seriously. And so I think it's important to know that there's a time and a place for things. And and it's really up to the individual, I think. But I do believe in a work setting, especially when you're managing a team or you're in a, you know, you're a team, you're on a team and you want to maybe step up into a leadership position, you have to be thinking about these things. You know, we it's just what is out there and what you have to think about. So it's, you know, that we have to just be thinking, how do I want to show up in this setting? And how do I want people to perceive me? And it matters, it matters. So it, it does matter. And so that leads me to, I mean, we, we can, we can talk for a long time and I, I really want to have our listeners get some practical information. How do we, well, how do you, let's, let's, let's make it about what you do. What is your process? Mm -hmm. I, I, Cause I know you do makeovers, not only individually, but digitally. So you're yes. talking about the ABCD, you know, you talk about how do you show up on social media? You do digital makeovers. Yes. 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 And you do personal makeovers. I mean, you know, I mean, do you get down to like, Hey Spencer, you need to remove your ear hair, um, <laughs> trim your eyebrows and nose hairs and, and <laughs> sort of things. We, we get down to everything. It's top to toe and it's what everybody, what anybody wants to really focus on, to be honest. How, how much do you want to really look at? And, and we will go there. Yes. Smell and all. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, it's, 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 it's all part of it. It's, you know, it, it's kind of like we used to say, you know, and I was in the in, entertainment business, we built IMAX theaters and, and we were in, in entertainment locations and you know, when things are off, sometimes when things are running smoothly, people don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes. You know, they, they you know, they don't smell you bad or you don't look out of, you just look nice. But when things are off, we tend to notice that more. That, yes. I mean, in a negative way. And, uh, you know, I think that talks, Christian, what you were talking about, you know, if we either take too much attention to ourselves or we, or to the other extreme, we, we don't care about ourselves at all. That's when we really get noticed. But I think mm -hmm. um, to, to have the best impact, it needs to be intentional. And, yes. and, and not people thinking, okay, that's, that's over the top or what's wrong. I mean, it's just, they know something's good and they don't know what it is. And they're just drawn to you. It's to the, you use the word magnetic, right? It's like, they're drawn yeah. to you. They may not even know why, but it's been very intentional. Yeah. And, and, and also because when you are intentional about yourself, your own energy shifts and then you you raise your frequency and then people become more magnetic to you because your your own vibe is higher you feel more confident you're feeling good right and we all know what that feeling feels like and of course people are attracted to that it's just science that that includes your attitude you know are you grateful or are you are you complaining you know, are you, are you a schlub <laughs> Christian <laughs> are you, or are you excited about life? I mean, who do you want to hang around? Right. Who do you want to be with? Of course it, you want to be with the person that's high vibe. Yeah. We create anchors when people like, do you have those people in your life when they call you, you're like, Oh, not, I'm swiping, you know, I'm swiping left. Right. 
So, I mean, we want to be people when they see us coming, they don't want to go the other way. They're excited to see us. Their, their tails start <laughs> wagging. Yeah, exactly. They want, they're drawn to us. That's what we want. Right. That's how you get ahead in life. And, and of course, to me, that's why I say I work with impact driven people because those are the people, those are my people who really care to make a difference, you know, because, and so that starts with the way you present yourself and your image. And you talked, you asked about my process. It really does start with that. We go deep. I ask a very in-depth questionnaire about who you are and all your likes and dislikes and, and really how you want to show up in the world. And I get to know you. I ask people, you know, how they describe themselves, right? And how they want to be perceived. How do other people, how do they think other people see them and perceive them? So we really go into it. And then I, you know, I take a look at their, their profiles. Uh, how are they showing up online? I take a look at their, their closet. How are they expressing themselves through clothing? And then I create a blueprint. It's really a guide to say, okay, you're here now, but this is where we're going to go. And we're going to have your whole, um, how you want to show up on social media, how you want to dress, what are your colors, what are your styles? and really customize it to that person. Just like I would say, it's very similar to if you hired an interior designer to come and redecorate your home, right? She would create, or he would create a mood board and would show you, oh, here's your styles, here's your colors, here's your fabrics, right? I do the same thing for who you are, your personal style. And so we use that blueprint and then we have a whole day where you know, we shop together and uh, I curate the day for each person. We do a fitting, we bought, we pull items that fit your new look. Um, uh, if people want to go further, we do a photo shoot and we get photos to use for your social media. And then um, my team uh, also rebrands your LinkedIn profile. So it's completely uh, redone for you to really highlight who you are and how you want to show up um, as a professional and um, especially on LinkedIn, because we have a lot more there that we can highlight and showcase. So it's really from your appearance all the way to your digital presence. And so you're totally rebranded after we work together. Christian, uh, Tavia, it was her, she and her partner, what, what is his name that you Paul. work with? Paul. They, they did, they helped me because, you know, they bring a, a younger perspective to my social media profile and, and, uh, right. Yes. Some of us old guys that have to worry about ear and nose hair sometimes don't always think about the emojis and stuff. Right. <laughs> and so hey, before you ask a question, I want to shout out to my friend, Eddie Fisher, who, uh, is hopefully listening. I just saw him make a little, uh, a comment on our uh, on our Eddie Fisher is a long 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 time friend of mine and Tavia he's a New Jerseyite so not far from you but okay. he has always been about image and and personal brand he has made several custom shirts for me uh, he it, and now he has he's running the How You Doing Foundation and helps people who are addicted to different substances and. He's just such a great, great individual, but he, uh, he absolutely loves the space that, that you operate in. So Eddie, thanks for, for, for listening up. <laughs> okay. So my question, yeah. So my question is, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask it in two parts that are kind of semi-related. Well, actually one's more a bit of a comment, but I'm curious your thoughts on it. You know, the, the, the idea of being intentional changing a wardrobe or or going out and buying new clothes uh you know one thing that does is it i don't know if the limit is the right word but it helps guide the choice that i make every day just like you were talking about every day i get up and i do things right mm -hmm. well it's easy for me to decide whether to make my bed or not make my bed or uh, if i'm going to have a bowl of cereal or i'm going to have toast and hot chocolate or whatever i'm going to have for breakfast um but you know, I have the habit of just putting the same stuff on all the time. But if you're telling me, hey, we're going to get a new war new wardrobe in here, then my choices are limited. Well, I'm going to put on what I got. And I'm gonna, you got me this stuff. I'm going to put this on. And and I like that because I don't have, it's not an, it's not an easy of an out for me, right? 
okay, I've invested this time in this effort. I have these new clothes and these are the clothes I'm going to choose from. You have a plan. So, so yeah. So it's, it's an, to me, it's like an easier way to make a change in behavior because my choices are limited. They're limited to the new wardrobe that you've helped me pick out. I got rid of my old stuff. Now I'm picking up this new stuff. And that leads to me to my second question, which is or, to the question part of this comment, I guess, I should say, <laughs> which is uh, how have you seen people's BCD changes, behavior, communication, digital, when they have changed their appearance? You know, what's been the impact that you have seen with your clients, uh, whether they're individuals or organizations, what's the impact that you have seen when they've gone through and they've made these kinds of changes? That's a great question. You okay? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great question. I will say back to your comment, Yes, that's one of the things that my clients love because I've taken that whole decision fatigue out of the, the way, right, for them because now they're like, oh, I don't have to feel overwhelmed and think about what I'm going to wear. Tavia already put it in my lookbook and it's decided, you know, because that's something we do together after we shop. I put outfits together so they're very clear, wear this for these occasions, this event type of thing. So it's all customized in that way and no more decision fatigue. Uh, and yeah, you have a plan. Okay. So that's number one. And then the second part is client. Well, of course, you know, confidence, that's like one of the biggest changes is just your confidence and how you're feeling about yourself. But to get into the tangible, I would say it's, it really varies, but it's mostly promotions. Um, they make more money. A lot of my clients are entrepreneurs, and so they increase their sales. I even had a client who does uh, sales calls on Zoom only, and he increased his um, his sales closing to 73%. So he really made a huge difference in um, just how he was showing up, and that obviously resulted in his sales results. Um, I've had entrepreneurial clients who you know, because we do the whole through your social media as well, um, get clients through LinkedIn. My client never had clients coming to them or getting any clients from LinkedIn before. Um, I've had clients increase their just financial state. So I've had clients get promotions. Um, also just show up as a more impactful leader. I think that, you know, we can't ignore the fact that um, it's image really highlights that, hey, I'm putting in more effort and people notice, right? So it does build better teams and showcases like, hey, I'm here to really, you know, step up and make a difference and people, people react to that and respond to that. And want to be uh, in relationships. So that's also been um, something that's happened too as a result of our work together. Well, Christian, I think uh, we've had some some great discussions here. I mean, I, I don't know if there's any more questions that you have. I mean, I think we could keep talking, but we might need to to wrap this up. Yeah, we've been going for uh, close to an hour. It's been the time has flown by. So, Tavia, uh, it's been an honor to have you on here, and I learned a lot. If our listeners and our viewers, if they want to learn more about how you potentially help them uh, on any of the A, B, Cs, or Ds, or all of the above, uh, what's the best way for them to reach out and connect with you? Okay, thank you. Uh, they can find me on. Um, Go to my website. It's styled sharp, S T Y L E D S H A R P. So styledsharp.com. And find me on social media, styled sharp. Uh, on my LinkedIn, it's just Tavia Sharp. And I'm in New York City, so I'm pretty easy to find. <laughs> All right. Well, next time we get up there, we'll have to we'll have to look you up. Spencer, you've yeah. been helping teams all over the world for decades. 
increase their performance. And so if you want a high performing team, you want to connect with Spencer, what's the best way Spencer for people to contact you? Check out my LinkedIn profile. See if you like my headshot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll, every, your everything hairs or your hairs or anything like uh, that. No, I don't think you can see those. Hopefully I try to trim them, but um, just Spencer <laughs> Horn on LinkedIn. And uh, you know, um, Tavia is going to be here in Salt Lake. The plan is the 17th, February 17th. So just not long after, uh, 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 what am I thinking? Uh, Valentine's Day. And she's actually going to do some some uh, work with some of the people that are part of our, our speakers uh, academy and, and, and share some of her expertise with them. So if you're in Salt Lake City in, in February and you want to meet, uh, if you want to meet Tavia, then let's uh, reach out to me and we'll, we'll figure out how to, how to get you uh, connected. And we're going to, we have a topic next week. I know we typically meet on Tuesday, but next week on Wednesday, that's Valentine's day. Christian, you and I are going to have, gosh, we're going to be a couple together on the, uh, on just for the show. And we're going to talk about team culture, especially how to, to, to move, how to create retention and move from exit interviews to retention interviews. So same time, noon Eastern, join us on the 14th. Christian, and uh, don't, Tavia, isn't he amazing? Yes, I love this. Yeah, he's so amazing. And and what else is he going to say? Actually, you know, he's just kind of average. No, 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 no. Listen, everybody that meets him absolutely adores him just because... He is, he is so awesome with his thoughtfulness and, and he's got the best questions. He's always, and that's why companies keep hiring him. And, and, uh, so if you are, listen, if you're in need of, of some of Christian's, uh, eyesight and, and brilliance and consulting, how do they find you? Well, that's very kind of you, Spencer and Tavia as well. Uh, just LinkedIn, you know, we'll do the trifecta for LinkedIn here. Just look up Christian Napier on LinkedIn. You'll find me there and happy to connect with anyone. So uh, a super enlightening conversation, Tavia. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with us today. Spencer, great to see you once again. Listeners, viewers, join us on Valentine's Day next week at 10 a.m. Mountain, 12 noon Eastern. Is that right, Spencer? That is correct. All right, fantastic. We'll have a great conversation about exit versus stay interviews or retention interviews. So in the meantime... Please like and subscribe to our podcast. We'll catch you again soon. Thank you so much.